Well, speaking of, we want to bring in now our favorite Dr. Cabaza. He is a pulmonary and critical care physician at Cleveland Clinic. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a big fan of yours because I was literally interviewing you constantly during COVID and you were always such a champ. So we're happy to have you here in studio to talk about this alert. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about this, there's the presence of air particles, right? And if I'm right, it's at 276 for these fire particles, which is very high, meaning that the air is very unhealthy. What does that really mean for us? So it really, when we step back from the numbers, when you have a lot of small particles, it means each time you breathe, more of these small particles can get deeper in your lower airways. Big particles are easy. They get caught in our nose, our eyes, our mouth, cause some local irritation, but the really fine particles that hang in the air, which we see with wildfires, they have the potential to get really deep down to the small air sacs at the end of your lungs, and for some people can cause really bad symptoms. Yeah, we often think of the elderly, we think of children, uh, but are you talking about, you know, Anyone sort of susceptible to this? Well, elderly, those with uh, heart conditions, lung conditions, pregnant women, and children, young children, I mean, those are people highest, most at risk for potentially getting bad symptoms and irritated from these uh, small particles. But really, anyone can be affected. Mm. Okay, and you're talking about the symptoms, so maybe lay those out for us so that we know what to look out for. And if you are experiencing it, maybe what should you be doing? Yeah, so the most common symptoms, so a lot of people have no symptoms uh, okay. to begin with, uh, but, also, but uh, we think of initially our surfaces of our body that air is always exposed to. So eyes, nose, mouth, throat. Might get a little watery eyes, a little itchy eyes, some stuffy nose, scratchy throat. Those are not serious. Those just suggest you've breathed in stuff that are irritating, um, ir irritating you a little bit, and they'll gradually get better. Uh, but the more serious stuff you think about, you know, coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, things that actually impair the airflow in your lungs. So these irritants, you know, if they make your airways really tight, it's going to be hard to move air in and out. So sometimes wheezing is a sign of that, but some people can have bad tightness in the airways even without wheezing. Um, so if, if you're having trouble and feeling winded doing something that usually doesn't make you feel winded, that would be a concerning sign. Hmm. So we today, oh, go ahead. Uh, okay. T today, um, I was at UPS <laughs> the line and there were a bunch of people wearing masks and I thought, should I be wearing a mask too? Because I wasn't. What are your no. thoughts on that? Yeah, so if you're at risk, so especially I think of people with asthma, COPD, people who already are needing medications to keep their airways more open, I view them as highest risk of being irritated mm. uh, uh, from the smoke. And so if you have to be out and you already have pre-existing lung disease, uh, an N95 really will minimize those small particles getting in. Um, those are really the main masks in wildfire and, and particulate matter exposures that are going to be most helpful. Uh, but it's really, I worry most about people with pre-existing lung disease who already are predisposed to have tight airways. Yeah. Mm. So let's say that, uh, you know, you have activities coming up tomorrow and in the next couple of days, uh, you're overall a healthy person. I mean, any tips? I mean, should they be aware of this? What, what, they sh what should they be thinking? I think everyone should be aware and just listen to your body, you know, follow, follow the signs. So if you're feeling off and especially having any breathing symptom, that would be a sign to kind of get inside. Now, if you can avoid outdoors in general for anyone, that's, that's best. And that's great if you can be in a uh, inside with uh, air conditioning or, or air filters, uh, windows closed, you know, to try to avoid the outside air. Uh, but most people are going to do okay. So if, you, if you're of lower risk and, and, you know, rather healthy, you can test it out, you know, but, but it's not, you know, it should be short-lived. So if you can avoid it, that's, that's great. But, uh, but I think most people will do okay because it's expected it to be a short exposure, even though the air is not great right now. But many weeks of this would not be ideal, but a couple right. of days, most people are going to do okay. Okay. Dr. Cabaza, thanks for being here and breaking this down for us. We appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Of course.